Welcome everyone, and I want to talk to you about explain plans in Oracle SQL Developer today. So I was working with a coworker the other day, and she needed help figuring out why her query was slow. And I'm sure this has happened to you more than once, and one of the first things you're going to go look at is the plan. So in Oracle SQL Developer, which is our free database IDE, I want to show you all of the plan support. Um, I guarantee you there's a lot more there than you realize. Just a little bit about SQL Developer. Uh, we've been out since 2005. We have quarterly releases now, so every three months you get a new version, new features, lots of bug fixes. And you are in a very large army of 5 million users out there um, using SQL Developer to work with your Oracle database. Just a couple of highlights of what we've done over the years. Um, I'm using version 18.2 today. Let's get into it. So I have a very simple uh, query, and I'm going to run this. I have a bind variable, so it's just prompting me for a value. So it's going to run this, and here's my data. Now that actually ran pretty fast, um, although it's just done a single fetch for the first 50 records. But I might still want to know um, how the database decided to go get this data, and it's actually quite complex. Um, all objects looks like a a simple query because it, it looks like a single thing, but it's actually a view that hits very many different um, tables and underlying views. But anyway, uh, if I want to go get a plan, uh, the explain plan is this button right here. And this is where you're asking the database, hey, please please tell me what you think the plan is going to be. And SQL Developer is not doing any uh, magic. You can see that we are using this SQL statement in the background to go get that plan. Explain plan set statement ID 4, and here's the query. Now the data that comes back from that uh, goes into a plan table, and we read from that plan table to populate this graphical interface down here on the bottom. Uh, these are object links, so I can see the first thing the database is going to do is go read um, using this index, the data in this table, sys.sum$, and if I click on this, it'll actually go open it for me, so I can go see what's what in here. Uh, I might want to customize what I'm seeing in these plans, so if I open up my preferences, do a search for plan, here are all of the different columns available in the um, plan table that you might want to see and some of these you might want to turn on um, definitely recommend you turn on other XML branch my friend Rick Van Dyke is a fan of turning on query block name because he uses those in his queries um, but you might want to turn on some other things in here as well and you might want to turn some things off as, as it's purely up to you so if we go run this again um, Here we have the updated view. And you can drag these things around if you'd like. Now, the problem with explain plan is that it can lie to you. Um, because the code that the database uses to go get these explain plans is not the same code the database uses to compute execution plans for your queries. So um, don't rely too heavily on explain plans and actually I never look at explain plans. What I like to do instead is look into the database for the plans that have already been computed for my queries and those are stored in a view called v$ SQL plan. Now the nice thing is that SQL Developer makes it very easy for you to get those. So with my cursor on this query instead of clicking on the fat part of the button here I'm going to click on the arrow part of the button. And SQL Developer says, hey, we found this query, as you've typed it, in the data dictionary, and we found a plan for it. Now, I'm not going to click this yet. What I want to do first is on my explain plan, I want to pin the plan so it doesn't go away when I bring up another plan, which is what would have happened. But now that I click this, I have the computed plan and the guesstimated, the explain plan. Now, these could be different, they might not be different. 
uh, how would we know? Well, I don't want you to come over here and scroll um, and, and figure that out with your um, eyeballs. I want you to instead right-click and say, use the compare feature. And there is a deviation right at the top of the plan. So as these steps are in red, um, you can see where the differences are. And there are lots of differences. So if you're having performance issues with your query, almost always try to use um, this feature. Now, uh, in version 18.2, we also added um, support for DBMS XPlan, which is a package call that you can make, which basically says, hey, for a specific SQL statement, go get me the plan. And there's a couple of different shapes or options you can pass um, to this function that determines um, what data is included in the plan. And that's here. So SQL Developer automatically figured out what that SQL ID was for me, and it's saying we're going to default to all stats last. Um, now, if I run this, it runs it as a query, uh, and the output below looks very similar to what we just saw there in the GUI, but now it's in text format. I could also just run this as a script if I don't want to see it in the grid at all and get it this way. So exact same data um, as here and also the exact same data as here um, because DBMS X plan is getting that same plan from the V$ SQL plan um, table or view that, that we're using here. Now if you're wondering why there's these two grayed out items it's because the dictionary allows for there to be multiple plans computed for a SQL statement and those are differentiated by the child number. So if you have multiple ones here, you need to figure out just which um, version of that plan is being used in the query when you go to execute it. So um, looking at plans as they're executing, there's actually a way to see that. Um, let me come back here. So I want to actually run this again as a script. And I'm also going to launch this feature. It's called the Real-Time SQL Monitor. Now, this is a premium feature the database provides via the tuning pack. So you need to make sure you're licensed for this feature before you use it. And to get to this feature, you say Tools, Real-Time SQL Monitor. So I'm going to run this. Uh, not like so as this query is running the screen over here is going to show me that plan the actual plan as it runs And some of the nice information here, as I can see actual rows versus plan rows. And this can cause problems. So on this hash join step, the database thinks it's going to encounter 5,417 entries. What it's actually encountering when it goes to do the work is 80,000, which is off by a factor of more than 10. Um, what's that? Factor of 14 or, or 15. So that could have negatively impacted the plan that was used. And what that's telling me is the, the data dictionary statistics are off. Um, and I need to go recompute those. There's some more information here available on this page. Um, and if you mouse over estimated cost, you can see we do a breakdown of CPU versus user I.O. Um, and there's also up here on the main part of the page, you can get a breakdown of the weight events. So database time is this, and then the largest weight event was CPU time. 
can also look at how the metrics of the workload progressed as the statement ran. So as we were fetching more and more data out of the dictionary, which came out of disk probably, um, CPU went up, memory looked pretty stable, and I.O. was stable throughout. One last way to look at plans, and that's Autotrace. This one's completely free. It's this fourth button here on the toolbar. This says, run the query. Let's change this back to bind. This um, gets your session statistics, runs the query, um, gets the plan, and then gets the statistics again, and then does a delta on those stats. So you can see that CPU used by the session as the query was running was set to a value of 12. And session PGA memory was this. And again, up top um, is the plan. And this is the actual plan, not the explained plan. So you can compare an auto trace to an explain. And you can also compare an auto trace um, with the cache plan as well. I'm not going to show those just to save time. Last two tricks for auto trace. Um, the optimizer has to make decisions based on the um, statistics or based on what it knows about the data to decide you know, what's the best way to, to go get this. And if you right click on this plan, um, we go in and look at the um, data that comes back and the database goes, hey, at this step, instead of doing what we did, we could have done this. And so if I click on one of these, it'll actually add a hint, and you can do some what-if scenarios. So let me see if I can find another one in here. So I'm going to add two hints. I'm going to pin this, and we're going to run this again. And now I can compare my two auto traces. And you can see the plan change because that hint directed the optimizer to make those different choices. So you can see how the plan changed, and you can also see how the statistics changed between the two runs. I'm not going to say if hints are good or bad. I can say that they're frequently abused, and you should know what you're doing before you start using hints in your application code, if at all possible. Um, fix what the database optimizer needs to know so you don't need a hint, you know, so make sure the statistics are up to date. That's the big one. And one last trick on auto trace, which again is another way of looking at the plan, but instead of looking at just the um, V$ dollar SQL plan, you also get to see the um, session statistics. We have these things called hotspots. And it tries to take you to places in the plan where there might be problems. And if you mouse over here, uh, you can see where it's telling you what those problems are. And in this case, um, we didn't fetch all of the records, because by default we just get the last 50. So if we come back here into the preferences, We look at the auto trace options. There's an option in here that says fetch all rows. So this means if it takes five minutes to fetch all of the rows down to the client for those really big queries, uh, you're going to have to wait a while for this to run. So I'm okay with that. Let's run this again. All right, so that did a full fetch, and now we go back to the hotspots. And this is saying um, the runtime for this plan is concentrated here at this step. There's actually a couple steps. Um, here we can see the cardinality set to two, um, but last output was way bigger. So 
what the database knows about this table is way off. Um, it thought it was going to get two rows back there, but it actually got 63,000 records back there. So um, I can't teach you how to tune a query based on what you're seeing in the explain plan, uh, but I can teach you how to get explain plans, how to get cache plans, how to use real-time SQL monitoring. Uh, if you want uh, expert insight and advice on how to uh, tune your queries, then I recommend you follow my colleague, uh, Maria Colgan, known as uh, SQL Maria on Twitter and on her blog, sqlmaria.com. Uh, thanks for your time today, and happy SQL diving.